Welcome to Spill the Tea. Today, I'm speaking with Drew Taylor. She writes sweet romantic comedies. <laughs> so, welcome to Spill the Tea, and today I'm talking to Drew Taylor, who has a brand new book out called The Designated Twin. Hi, Drew. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your book? Hi, Josephine. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so The Designated Twin is the third book in my designated series, and people, myself included, of course, have been describing this book as a warm hug. <laughs> like, you read it, and it feels like you're getting immersed in some modern redneck fairy tale, and it just feels like coming home, I guess. Um, That's a it's nice It's very sweet. Yes, it's very sweet. Um, it explores the nuances between um, characters who are definitely not the same. You have one prince who is super flirty and touchy and handsy and like, you know, like his, his love language is physical touch and all this. And then you have this female character who is on the uh, autism spectrum mm. and she experiences sensory overload a lot <laughs> and she is never dated. She's never been kissed, never been in a relationship of any kind, really. And she cannot stand touch, makes her skin crawl. So it's it's a very fun, quirky, awkward book that just feels like a slice of joy. That's, that's the only way I can say it. Um, and it feels that way because I was super depressed while I was writing it and I needed something to make me smile. So that's that's how it came out the way it did. Um, but yeah, I love this book. It's like 350 pages and it's a quick, easy read. And I think readers will really appreciate just the, again, the joyfulness and the warmness of the story. So it's definitely a, a happy opposites attract sort of thing. Yes, yes. Low angst. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what made you decide to write like royalty into a book? <laughs> um nothing in particular <laughs> I was writing the first book The Designated Friend and um while those main characters are on a road trip she runs into this guy that she went to college with and had become really good friends with and he was secretly in the states as a prince why I decided to put that in there I thought it would be fun to see a prince in Mississippi that was it <laughs> And then his character just started coming to life. And I was like, oh, he gets a story. And yeah, that's that's how it happened. I just, yeah, Prince in Mississippi just sounded really, like, really cool. Like redneck royals. I was like, that's, that's cool. Isn't it, isn't it funny how side characters, like, they'll they'll tell you, like, I'm more important than you think. Yes. <laughs> right in my book. Real fast. Real <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. So um, are, are your books based in Mississippi, like the entire series, or are, do they take in di place in different places? Yeah, so the entire designated series is based in Mississippi. Um, the first book is a road trip, so it, it like starts out there and it'll end there, but that's where they're from, you know, so like the characters are like definitely have that Mississippi spirit and stuff. And um, the second book, The Designated Valentine, um, is a novella. It's it's a long novella. It's it's right there, almost at a novel length. <laughs> um, but it takes fully place in Mississippi. Some of the past chapters will take place in Dallas, Texas, where they're both from. Um, and then The Designated Twin mostly takes place in Mississippi, um, except for when they go to Corsa, which is the country that Finley um, is from. And it's based off of Norway. Oh, okay. So it's a fictional yeah. country based off of Norway. Yes. Interesting. Yes. And you have uh, another one coming out in the future for this series? Yes, the last one. I'm so excited for it. I'm very nervous for it as well. <laughs> Let me preface with that. Um, it is the designated date. And it is the twin. Like this one obviously was the designated twin. They were twin sisters. It was a twin swap. Um, so it's it's the other twin story. And uh, hers is, this book's a lot different than what I've written in the past. It's still a rom-com, but there's definitely some darker tones to it. Mm. and um it explores just um so yeah I'm a Christian and so you know sex outside of marriage to me is is condoned or not condoned I should say but it happens all the time <laughs> for Christians like we slip up we make mistakes human nature it's happened, yeah. yes it's happened to me and I wanted to explore that in a in a clean rom-com so 
both of my characters, you know, they slip up, they they make a mistake. And uh, I just want to show like their struggles overcoming that and through that. And it's going to be complex, but I'm really excited for it. And I hope readers accept it. <laughs> so for your books, you've stated that they're rom-coms. Are mm -hmm. they clean? Are they uh, closed door? Um, do they have like inspirational or Christian elements? So they definitely have, ins oh, I love this question. Okay. <laughs> so they definitely have inspirational Christian elements because I am a Christian and I feel like there's, that's the worldview I, I come from. I approach mm -hmm. everything I do in life from this Christian perspective that I have. Um, I wouldn't call my books clean. <laughs> I just made a reel about this on my Instagram not long ago because I, I talk a lot about like, you know, there's various attraction levels. My characters are, I mean, off, it'll be closed door for sure, but you know, they're going to do things that good Christian girls shouldn't do. Right. <laughs> um, sometimes I slip up and curse though. I don't actually write the word into the book. I will say like he cursed or cur like, just put like mm -hmm. a curses blank there or whatever. Um, so, you know, I have, I'm hesitant to call it clean because you know, they have drugs, they have alcohol, they have sex, they have all these other components that most people are like, dude, don't put that in a story. I'm like, why? It's, it's real. We, we it, should have this in a story. It we is real life this. and how, how people deal with it, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And I want people to see, well, this is how Christians deal with it, or this is how we should deal with it. This is the struggles we have with it. You know, these types of things. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I feel like I'm on a personal mission to bridge the gap between Christian fiction and secularism. So I don't really call my books Christian fiction. I'm more like they're rom-coms from a Christian worldview. Like, oh, I like Christian. that. I like yeah. that though. That's yeah. a good description. It's a rom-com from a Christian worldview. Yeah. The term yeah. Christian applies to humans. It applies to living, breathing souls. A, mm -hmm. a, a book can't be Christian. A movie can't be Christian. Like only humans can be Christian. And so I'm like, you know, if other religions can have their worldview openly explored in movies and film without it being labeled like Hindu fiction or Islam fiction, mm -hmm. why can't Christians? So that's that's kind of where I come from. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, yeah. have, have you heard of the Facebook group called uh, Just Kisses? Yes, I think I'm in it. <laughs> there, there we go. I was going to say, if you have, that might suit your work, you know. Yes. Because I'm in that group too. So yeah, because my, my books, like you said, you know, once in a while he cursed or, you know, something happens. I do have one closed door romance, but it's like for the rest of the part, it's, it's not super clean, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, fairly sweet and it's not you know what the mainstream would necessarily be reading yes and you write uh room like romantic mysteries right I I write uh cozy mysteries as well cozy yeah. mysteries okay what's the difference I'm just curious um well the cozy mysteries the mystery itself is always like the main thing going on there oh. might be romance elements in the background but gotcha. it's always the mystery you have to solve Okay. And it's, we never see the murder on screen. There's no guts and gory. We don't swear. Um, you know, we have cutesy little clues and it's very <laughs> PG-13. <laughs> I love that. No, I've been wanting to read, like mystery has never been like my big genre that I read, but like mm. I'm starting to get into it more. And I've seen some of your books and I have them like downloaded on my Kindle ready to read <laughs> come, come the fall season. <laughs> I, I think, um, like I, I started in romance mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong. I love romance, but I think cozy mystery is where I shine because I'm quirky when it comes to writing. So my thing is always what trouble can they get into? How bad can I make it times three? <laughs> and then let's see how they get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So you, you, you set up this like trap for your characters to oh, fall dude. in and then it, then your hands off. Good luck guys. Yeah, let's see good how luck. You let's, tell me how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much and I do uh, that in my romance and relatable. that's probably why my romance isn't taking off well <laughs> you know I, I kind of do the same thing I put my characters like I'm a I am a pantser hands down I hardly ever plot anything if I do it's literally just like two sentences of like I I know I need this to happen at some point somewhere yeah. in the story 
and my characters they just honestly I, I don't know I explore who they are as I write like and then I end up knowing or learning something about them halfway through and I'm like crap I gotta go back to the beginning and write this into her character somehow <laughs> and yeah I love it's that I love there. writing like that though it's I don't think I could do it any other way so what drew you into writing I've always loved it I mean I guess that's the cliche author response <laughs> um I've always loved like story let me just I've always loved story um you know as a kid telling stories reading stories my parents were really good about reading to me young and getting me to start reading at a young age and and you know always I used to write song lyrics a lot if you look in my middle school journals um songs <laughs> that hopefully never see the light of day um so I used to like be really into poetry my mom I learned this about her probably a few years ago that she used to write poetry and I had no idea and oh, so yeah I was like oh so this is where I get it from okay <laughs> um I didn't really start writing with the idea of completing a full book I would say until uh 2019 2020 um I started writing a dystopian and then the pandemic hit and I was like <laughs> too dark <Nope>. um, <laughs> <laughs> let's do a sweet romance <laughs> and um I did and I haven't looked back since except for now now I'm looking back because I want to publish the dystopian next year um but I don't know just something about I know a lot of authors like just they write because it's fun they write because they have these stories that they want to tell or these situations they've dreamed up in their heads and things like that and just that that creative mind mm -hmm. me my books feel like my personal journals like oh me I just write I pull from all kinds of experiences that I have all kinds of just things that I question about life things that I question about people and things I want to explore deeper and I do that through my writing so like I might not necessarily agree with something I put into a book or something but it's something I want to explore or like my dystopian like I don't agree with communism but I want to explore it so I'm writing a communistic society like that everyone loves just because I want to explore it deeper so I mean just like little things like that I think that's the core of the reason that I write is to explore things at a deep personal level and then hopefully <laughs> other people out there can learn alongside me can benefit from it can see themselves in the stories through the characters and the different explorations that the characters go through so I think that's probably the reason that I write mm -hmm. now is this your only series or have you written another one so I have two I have the politics of series which um the first book I ever wrote was the politics of Christmas I wrote a Christmas book with politics in it because I majored in political science, majored in history, and I love Christmas. And so I was like, blend it together. Oh, and, and I'm a teacher too. So of course, one of the main characters is a teacher. Um, so I just, yeah, that one again, just came from a place of exploring what life would have looked like if I would have continued on the route of law school, mm -hmm. became, you know, a political campaign manager, like I had wanted to at one point and all of this stuff so you know my female main character is, is doing that with her life um so that yeah again just a, just an exploration the second book is the politics of love deals with um two characters from the first book um one of them is set to become the president of the united states so it's a uh he's a he's a big shot kind of thing he's a billionaire <laughs> about to be president it, it's a pride and prejudice uh it's not a retelling but it's definitely pulls from pride and prejudice mm -hmm. Um, like his name is Darcy and her name is Hayden Bennett. So I mean, it's like, you got getting all elements. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a third book that I want to write for that series that deals with like international politics. It's kind of like, I just like leveled it up and um, it'll be set in Japan mm -hmm. with uh, two Japanese characters. And so that's really interesting to me to, to again, explore that culture, explore all that. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to write it or if people want it <laughs> but I don't I don't know when I'm gonna write it um so right now that book or that series just consists of those two books um and then the designated series has three fourth one coming out in September and then a secret novella coming out in November that will tie in to the designated series but it's not technically a part of it 
um, it's going to be one of those multi-author collaborations. So I'm excited oh, nice. for it. But it does deal with politics. So I'm excited about that too. <laughs> An election season romance. <laughs> Which kind of is timely because yeah. I believe there's an election going on in the US. So there is. And that's why I was like, I got some authors. I'm like, y'all, let's distract people. You know, they're going to be tired of hearing yeah. about this election. Let's give them a romance to read with politics in it to distract them. But it still fits into the season. So <laughs> I It'll think that's fun. a smart marketing move. I, I like think so too. Hopefully people like it. I know people like cringe when they hear the word politics and I'm just like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of bad that way here in Canada. I'm like, what are they up to now? What did they do now? <laughs> oh yeah, I forget. Yeah, I just said you're from Canada. Yeah, totally, totally diff <laughs> different country okay. yet pretty well, much yeah. the same North America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> we've got the same problems here it's 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 not it's universal I think so. yeah that's, that's what I was about to say I was like our problems are definitely similar I think right now <laughs> <laughs> now your books are they published wide or have you chosen to go with just Amazon and was there a reason that you chose I, I don't know are you independently published or traditionally published I am currently independently published mm -hmm. But that I could be going hybrid soon. I'll just leave that there. Oh, um, good for you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's secrets. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, which will be revealed at a later date. So stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. Who knows when? But um, I, I really, really love being independently published. I will say that. Um, I. I didn't choose this route because I was being rejected from querying or anything like that. I, I never even queried my book. I've mm -hmm. never done that. I chose independent publishing from the get-go because I'm a control freak <laughs> and I, I want to control absolutely everything. Cause like you said, these Welcome books are my love. babies. They're my babies yeah. and I love them and I want to take care of them myself and I want to raise them up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I, I chose it and I don't think I'll ever not publish an indie. Like there may be a couple of books that end up going hybrid or end up going trad, making me officially a hybrid author, but I love indie publishing. Love it so much. Um, my books are just on Amazon as of now. Um, I have been setting some stuff up in Ingram Spark to hopefully go wide with them later but I've just taken this process step by step like little tiny baby steps um because trying to learn it all at once so overwhelming <laughs> and That's I'm a full -time teacher I'm a teacher so like you know during the school year time I don't have a lot of time to devote to learning all the things and doing all the things like I hardly have time to write so it's it's a slow process, but I do plan to eventually take them wide. Mm -hmm. Just again, don't know when that's going to happen yet. So are you in the uh, KU program? Mm -hmm. I am. And right now, like a lot of my money comes from KU. So mm -hmm. I don't want to pull my books from there for sure. Right now, again. Yeah. Yeah. I find that especially like getting started it's a good thing to be in KU to mm -hmm. be on Amazon just to get the ropes of it all and then maybe after you've exhausted that sort of audience to to go wide or to think about traditional I mean some mm -hmm. people get traditional right away and kudos to yeah. them but yeah. yeah yeah no it's 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 a fine line and I think it's great that we have that opportunity because you know 20 years ago it just wasn't there Mm -hmm. so it's really awesome that anybody can write a book and market it nowadays and the, the platform is there for you and I really love it and and I think that indie authors can do a really can do just as good of a job as a traditional author it's it's all about the time that you put into it um the money you put into it you know money money does play a role in it unfortunately yeah. um and just again like being meticulous about it, like treating it like you're traditionally publishing it. And if you do that, I think indie authors can be very successful. We've seen a lot of indie authors um, become really successful. And, mm -hmm. and I, lo I love seeing it because you're not being told what to strip from your stories. You're not being told how you need to write for the market. Like I don't write for the market. Everyone's doing hockey. You can't stand That's hockey. True. 
I'm not going to write a hockey romance, like, just because everyone else is doing it. Um, I'm going to stick to writing what the Lord tells me to write and watch him work through it. And that's what I love about indie publishing is like, I don't feel that pr- I don't have to feel that I could put it on myself, but I choose not to pressure to like appease the market. Mm-hmm. That definitely is. It's, it is a bit of a pressure, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I always think to myself, it's, it's always nice to buck trends. And I feel like also, if you find your niche of people and you get that loyal audience, it doesn't matter. What exactly. The trend is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. it's just, And with social media, the opportunity is out there to reach out to them and stuff like that. Speaking of which, do you have a social media presence? Yep. I have uh, Instagram, um, author Drew Taylor, uh, Facebook, Drew Taylor, author. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, they wouldn't let me do this. I don't know why. Anyway, maybe one day it'll fix. Um, I have a TikTok. It's faith-filled romance mm-hmm. um, because apparently you're more successful on TikTok if you make it like your bookstagram account or like a bookish account versus your actual author account, which when I changed it from like my author name to faith-filled romance, I did get a lot more followers. So oh, sweet. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, And then, you know, I have a Pinterest too that I like to point people to because I, you know, I do fun things on there sometimes like, you know, aesthetic boards and things that people can like get a deeper insight into my stories. Um, And again, that's um, at author Drew Taylor. So Neat. Uh, I love, I have a love hate relationship with social media. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think a lot of us do as authors. I don't use I don't use my uh, my social media as marketing tools. Let me just put it that way. Mm-hmm. I did that and I hated it. And I just felt, felt myself like feeling so fake about everything. Um, so my social medias are more about getting to know me and who I really am and fun videos. And yes, I'll post teasers and quotes and things like that when I want to. Um, but I also talk about a lot of other stuff. I talk about religion. I talk about politics. I talk about uh, trends in the world. I talk about things I'm going through personally, things I see other people going through. Um, it's a community. It's mm-hmm. a community on my page. And and that's what I, that's what I've really grown. I've grown to love social media now because of it feeling like a community that I'm genuinely present with and invested in and they're invested in me and that I think is how I've been yes and I think that has really helped me as an author too Mm -hmm. because I think readers like that they like to feel like like we talked about at the beginning they like to feel like they're seen that they're heard that they're appreciated because they are they truly are so I love that that's part of why I thought doing interviews like this, you know, you're giving a voice, you're giving a face to that author name, and hopefully people are connecting and they're, yes. they're, you know, feeling that, oh, hey, this is someone that I, I like, and, you know, I'm going to go check out their books and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So if you do want to check out your books, we're going to have the links to her social mm-hmm. media and to the designated twin in the lovely description underneath mm-hmm. so that you can go check them out. Um, do you have like a, like a newsletter as well or do you just do the social media? Um, I do have a newsletter. It's kind of sucky. It's uh, <laughs> I don't I don't it's just know. starting. She <laughs> will improve. <laughs> Yeah, well, I wouldn't even say it's just starting. (laughs) (laughs) I send out, I do send out a newsletter monthly. Um, There is a link to sign up for my newsletter in my Instagram bio. Um, I can shoot you a link and we can link it down here too. Um, I don't have a website at the moment. Um, I'm hoping to get one by the end of the summer. And so that'll, that'll be posted to my social media and stuff if I do get one. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now my link tree has all things that you need to know, really. Um, my newsletter, <laughs> it's random pictures from Alaska or from my life, whatever's going on. Um, a little coffee, coffee time chat session. Sometimes I give away coffee gift cards because I like gift giving. Um, I tell you what's going on with my books that you probably already know about because I've probably already put it on social media. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I have a hard time keeping things a secret unless I'm forced to keep it a secret um 
And then I like to share about other authors through my newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, I like to spotlight an author every month, uh, share about their books and and um, if there's any like giveaways or promos happening, it'll be there. And then um, mid month, I'll send out um, another like book rec email filled with again, other, I don't know. It's not really about me. My newsletter is about other people, <laughs> a little bit about me, more about other people. But I, I love that because I love supporting other authors. I think that it's just so important to this community is to support each other, especially when we're indie. Absolutely. Um, so with your new release, the designated twin, did you do anything extra special for it? Um, I got to have a watch party, uh, in my hometown. That was pretty fun. Oh, nice. Um, a lot of my family and friends came out and, uh, my local coffee shop hosted it and I love them. <laughs> Shout out to Main <laughs> Street Coffee Co. If you're ever in Papa Rome, Mississippi. Um, we, so that was fun. Um, my I had a better organized street team for this launch um and yeah shout out to Drew's crew because they were amazing this is my best launch yet and and they were just phenomenal about completing tasks that I give that I had given them doing things I didn't even ask of them to do um picking out quotes making beautiful beautiful aesthetic reels and images I was just I felt so humbled and blessed to have them on my side for this launch. And, and I think it, because of them, this was an amazing launch. It was nothing I, I did. I just gave them some advice on, on some things to do and they took it and ran with it. And yeah, I keep telling them over and over. They're probably getting tired of hearing it from me, just <laughs> how thankful I am and just blown away. So that was nice. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> And if you have any advice for any aspiring writers, what would it be? Mm. I know, hard question. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think. Or maybe, maybe we can turn it into what would you wish someone had told you at the beginning? I wish someone had told me, and I think this would be go, yeah, go along very well with like advice that I would probably give an aspiring author is, and I'm just trying to figure out the right way to word it, but don't, don't compare yourself to people's journeys. Don't, don't think that someone starts out bigger than you. They have a bigger launch than you, that they're going to be more successful than you don't play the comparison game because it will eat you alive. Like it will get you down real fast. And like, mm -hmm. that's happened to me. And I've had to like claw my way up out of that. Cause you, you feel like a failure sometimes when you see other people who started out after you being more successful than you. And you're like, well, what? But then, you know, God shows up and he shows you why he has your journey going the way that he has it going. And I look back and I'm like, if I would have exploded on my first book, I would have probably never written another one because I would have had functional freeze and wouldn't have been able to do anything because I'm <laughs> such an introvert. And I would have, my head would have been spinning. I wouldn't have known what to do. The fact that my growth has been slow, but steady. I'm just so thankful for that. Mm -hmm. um, and another piece of advice I, I would, I have to, I have to mention is to write what you want to write. Again, going into the, you know, yes, you have to think about market. Yes, you have to think about trends. Yes, you have to think about all these things. But at the end of the day, you need to stay true to your voice. You need to stay true to your convictions. You need to stay true to um, the stories that are on your heart. Because if you try to write something else, one, it's going to be a harder task. Like the politics of love. I should have never written that book. Like it, people love it. Don't get me wrong. I hated it, though. I hated it. It just it was awful writing that book because I wasn't supposed to write that book right then. Mm -hmm. When I was supposed to write it, that's when it finally clicked and came together, but it took a year to get there. So like, <laughs> write what's on your heart, write what you feel called to write and give it to the Lord. And I mean, and again, this is me addressing Christians because you're you're not gonna do that if you're not a Christian. But if you are a Christian, like stay true to him. Don't try to write something that you know goes against him or your beliefs but also stay true to your voice. So I think those are really important things to do as an author because people, readers notice, 
they notice when you're faking something and they notice when you're being genuine in your writing. Very true. That's mm -hmm. very true. So um, we're kind of coming to the end of our journey yeah. because we're <laughs> running out of time. So I want to say thank you so much for coming on. It was a really good chat. I enjoyed it very much. And, you know, maybe once you get your next book out, give me an email and we can uh, do it again. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a dark conversation. I look <laughs> forward to it. <laughs> it was so nice to meet you, Josephine. Thank you so much for having me on. And I'm so glad that you do this for authors. It's really cool. I, I hope to maybe do something like this one day when I don't have to teach. <laughs> so that's that's the ultimate goal, is it? To, to full time author. Eventually full time? <laughs> yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. I keep telling myself that too, but you know, the insurance industry, it pays the bills. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, that's teaching pays the bills, but I do love it. Let me, let me, case any of my students see this. I love you. You're the best. And I wouldn't leave you hanging. Oh, okay. if any, if any of my I clients see this, yeah. I, I still do enjoy taking care of your insurance <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good at it, but you know, eventually the dream, right? The dream. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think we all have that. I think everybody understands that too. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a bit of inspiration when we, you know, even though it takes time to do the transition, it does eventually hopefully happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>